for two places tonight, the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 34, and then once you find your place there, uh, if you look at Hebrews chapter 11 as well. Deuteronomy chapter 34 and then Hebrews chapter 11. I told you this morning that there are young people, children this week, they're studying about the life of Moses. He was the character uh, that they're going to be looking at. And you can look around the room and see each one of these is an emphasis for each night. God loves me. God calls, uh, calls me. God saves me. God guides me. God cares for me. And each one of those is a theme uh, for each night of the week. And uh, so be praying for that. They're learning tonight. I'm pretty sure it's God saves me, I believe it is, tonight. And uh, either that or God loves me, one of the two. I know they're dealing with John 3.16, so maybe it's God loves me. I read through everything, and uh, it looks very good. We're talking about the birth of Moses tonight and uh, salvation. Of course, the gospel will be presented each night. And uh, so you pray uh, concerning that. Found your place, Deuteronomy chapter 34. We see the end of Moses' life here. The Bible says in verse number 1 of Deuteronomy chapter 34, And Moses went up from the plains of Moab unto the mountains of Nebo to the top of Pisgah. That is over against Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead unto Dan and all of Naphtali and the land of Ephraim and Manasseh and all the land of Judah unto the utmost sea and the south and the plain of the valley of Jericho the city of palm trees, and to Zoar. The Lord said unto him, verse 4, This is the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, saying, I will give it unto thy seed. I have caused thee to see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not go over hither. And we know he couldn't enter in because of his disobedience. And verse 5 says, So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab over against Beth Peor. But no man knoweth of his sepulcher unto this day. Moses was an hundred and twenty years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. Wouldn't you like to be 120 in that way? And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab thirty days. So the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended. And Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands upon him, and the children of Israel hearkened unto him, and did as the Lord commanded Moses. And there arose not a prophet since an Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. And all the signs and the wonders which the Lord sent to him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to all his land. And in all that mighty hand and in all the great terror which Moses showed in the sight of all Israel. The Bible says, verse 10, there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses whom the Lord knew face to face. What fellowship they had. Moses and God. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 23, we see the testimony of Moses' faith. We looked at this earlier in the year on Sunday mornings, but the Bible says in verse 23, by faith Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Verse 24, By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. 
by faith they, being the children of Israel, passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians, are saying to do, were drowned. By faith, Moses, the Bible says, time and time again, by faith, through faith, That's how Moses lived his life. And he wasn't perfect, of course. Uh, He doubted whether God had called him in the beginning in Exodus chapter 3. And God had his hand upon his life, though. And I read the last chapter of the book of Deuteronomy because we see how Moses left. We see his exit. And we think about the fact that if all of us live and the Lord doesn't come, there is going to be a day of departure for all of us. I spoke at the nursing home Tuesday night, and in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, we see 14 contrasts there in that third chapter, and the Bible talks about in the opening part of those contrasts, in verse number 2, there's a time to be born and a time to die, right? And we don't like to think about that, humanly speaking, but... Uh, how will we exit? How will we exit? Someone has said this, you're not really ready to live until you're ready to die. Interesting. You're not really ready to live until you're ready to die. Now, as a believer, we understand that because you need to be prepared for death because death can come at any moment. And you need to, of course, have trusted Christ as Savior. Someone said this, if you live each day as if it was your last, Someday, you will be right. It's interesting. You live each day as if it was your last. Someday, you'll be right. Uh, a fellow by the name of Steve Jobs. Anybody ever heard of Steve Jobs? He was one of the co-founders of Apple Computers. He said this. Now, Mr. Jobs, from what I understand, what I've read about him, he actually grew up where there was some influence for Christ, uh, but he was turned away from it as a young man by some hypocritical believers, from what I understand. And uh, he got into all kinds of Eastern mysticism and that type thing. He said something interesting, though, and he gave this address at Stanford University in uh, 2005. He said, when I was 17, I read this quote, and for the past 33 years, I've looked in the mirror every morning and asked myself, if today were the last day of my life, would I want to do what I'm about to do today? He said this, Remembering that I'll be dead soon is the most important tool I've ever encountered to help me make the big choices of life. Interesting. Come from a lost man, uh, those recollections. But I submit to you that a wise person lives with the end in view, that this is not all there is, that there is a day coming, just as Solomon wrote there in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, there's a day coming when I will die. Just like the writer of Hebrews said, and Hebrews 9:27 is appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. Now think about Moses and his exit. There's some things I think we can learn from this last chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. Now just a couple things, quick things, I want to share with you. Uh, first is this: we can we can leave behind a lasting legacy, a lasting testimony. That's probably a better word for the Lord Jesus Christ, if we do these things. First of all, uh, number one, we need to demonstrate how to handle failure. Demonstrate how to handle failure. Where do we see this at? Well, look at verse number four of Deuteronomy chapter 34 there. Deuteronomy 34, verse four. God speaking to Moses. Moses is about to die. Very next verse, as a matter of fact. And God said to him, This is the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, saying, I will give it unto thy seed. I have caused thee to see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not go over hither. How to handle failure. Now, Moses, he he had quite a testimony all throughout his life. That's why I read Hebrews chapter 11, and we see all the things he had. He lived by faith, but he disobeyed God when God told him to speak to the rock, and he struck the rock. And because of that, God said, you're, you're going to be able to see the land, and that's what we see here in this last chapter. You're going to be able to see over into it, but you're not going to be able to possess it. It's not going to be yours. Now, 
what he could have done is he could have just, you know, said, well, hey, you know, I've made it thus far, and so I'm not going to be able to enter in, then I'm just going to do whatever, do whatever I please, live however I please to the end. But he didn't do that. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, he endured as seeing him who is invisible. He understood saying some things about his exit. Bible teacher by the name of Francis Schaeffer said this, one of, the most, one of the profound truths of the Bible is that God does not excuse sin. But neither is he finished with us when he finds sin in us. Aren't you glad we have a forgiving God? We have a forgiving Savior? He went on to say this, the leadership of biblical men was not in every case ended because they sinned. We can think of others other than Moses. We can think of uh, David and others. God knew from the beginning who Moses was. He knew Moses was not without sin. God is the omniscient God who is never taken by surprise. So what happens when there's sin found? Well, we have a responsibility when sin is in our life, and we know when it's there as a believer. Our fellowship with God is broken. Look in 1 John chapter 1, if you would. And notice what John wrote here. He said in verse 3, That which we have seen and heard declare me unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship was with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And he has a lot to say about this communion, this fellowship. In verse 4, And these things write me unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of Him and declare unto you. Now, John had firsthand, he had heard it, he was an eyewitness. And what does he say in verse 5? That God is light and in Him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, if it's a continual pattern of our life, what does he say? He said, we lie and do not the truth. Look, if you know Jesus Christ as Savior, there will not be a continual pattern of sin in your life. Consistently. didn't say you'd never sin ever. He takes care of that in a minute. Verse 7, but if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ His Son cleanseth us from, and I've circled that word there, all sin. All sin. Verse 8, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess, here's the responsibility we have, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I think Moses understood. I think he experienced that. I know this is written years after he died, but I think he understood something about the forgiveness of God. Verse 10, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Look at verse 1 of chapter 2. My little children, these things, what things? These things I've already written in chapter 1. These things write unto you that you sin not, that you don't live in a continual pattern of sin, and if any man sin... We have an advocate, a go-between, with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, that Greek word, parakletos, one who comes alongside to help. And he is the propitiation. That means full payment for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. How did Moses, how did he deal with failure? Well, he sought the Lord. God forgave him. Now, he still had to deal with the consequences of his sin. God said, you're, not going to, you're, you're going to be able to see the land, but you're not going to be able to enter into it. Even knowing that truth, Moses stood true. He stood true. He lived for God, even knowing that truth. See, we live lasting footprints by how we respond, demonstrate our reaction to failure. Let me give you another thought. Back in Deuteronomy chapter 34, we leave a lasting legacy, we leave a lasting testimony after we're gone by investing in the lives of others that are around us. Let me ask you a question. Who are you investing in? Who are you investing in? Look at verse 9, Deuteronomy chapter 34. Moses had somebody that he was bringing along, a man by the name of Joshua. That was his... Uh, Disciple, if you will, he was, he was bringing him along in the Lord. And God's going to raise up Joshua. Joshua's going to become the leader of the nation of Israel. The Bible says, And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses, what had happened? Moses had laid his hands upon him, 
And the children of Israel hearkened unto him and did as the Lord commanded Moses. What did Moses do? He invested in the life of Joshua. Look just a couple chapters before that, chapter 31. Same book, Deuteronomy, chapter number 31. Deuteronomy 31, verse number 7. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 31, verse 7, And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and of a good courage, for thou must go with this people into the land which the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. Not only did Moses get not get upset and frustrated at God because God was not going to allow him to enter in to the promised land, he even more so took the time to instill into Joshua the truths that had been given to him, that spirit of wisdom. He took the time to disciple him. He took the time to, to bring him along. And so I ask us in this room tonight, include myself in that, who are we bringing along? Who is our Joshua, if you will? If we're going to leave a lasting testimony, if we're going to leave a lasting legacy for Jesus Christ, and I think we have a responsibility all throughout the Word of God, all the way back in uh, chapter 6 of uh, this same book of the Bible, Deuteronomy, in the Psalms time and again, in the New Testament we find out that we have a responsibility to take what we've received and to pass it on to the next generation. Uh, I mean, why don't we have vacation Bible school? Why don't we have junior church and graded Sunday school classes? And why do we do all these things? Because we're trying to instill into young people, which is the future of Calvary Independent Baptist Church. Amen. We're trying to put the truth in their hearts and allow the Spirit of God to touch their hearts and work in their hearts to bring them along in the truth. And who are we bringing along? What, what Joshua's are we developing in the truth of God? I think we have a responsibility there. You know what happened when there wasn't a focus, when there wasn't vision to do that? Well, you look at the book of Judges as it opens up. The Bible says there arose another generation in Judges chapter 2, verse number 10, which knew not the Lord nor the mighty works that he had done. Somewhere along the line, someone failed to take what they had received and to give it to the next generation. Somewhere along the line. We're talking about leaving a lasting testimony, leaving a lasting legacy. It's demonstrating how to handle failure. Not only is it demonstrating how to handle failure, it's investing in the lives of others around us. Not only that, it's living a life day in and day out of obeying and loving God. Look in chapter 30, the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 30, if you will. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Just a few verses. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse number 11. For this commandment which I commanded this day, it is not hidden from thee, thee, excuse me, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldst say, Who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it? Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldst say, Who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it? For the word is very nigh unto thee, in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. And then I command thee this day, and what was the command? To love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments and his statutes, his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land where thou goest to possess it. But, if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land which thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. Verse 19, I call heaven and earth the record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Thou mayest love the Lord thy God, that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days, 
that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Here it is. God's saying, I've, I've put it before you. You have a choice to make. He says, choose life. Choose to live. Choose to obey and choose to love me and follow my commandments and my statutes and my judgments. Because if you do that, there is life. And not just physical life, but there is eternal life if you obey them. But if you fail to obey them, he gives them what will come to pass. And we know from the history of the nation of Israel, when they failed to obey them, what happened? They died. They perished. Now look in the New Testament with me for just a minute. Second Corinthians. And notice what Paul has to say here in Second Corinthians chapter 1. Second Corinthians chapter 1. Leaving a lasting legacy. Leaving a lasting testimony. We're talking about demonstrating how to handle failure. Investing in the lives of others. Living a life of loving and obeying God. Notice what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength in so much that we despaired even of life. We had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves but in God which raiseth the dead. I mean, this was for Paul, dire straits. He said, this was it. This, we were looking. In other words, what he's really saying there is we were looking death in the face. That's what he was saying. Verse 10. Who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. What did Paul say? We're going to keep on believing. We're going to keep on loving. We're going to keep on obeying him. God is good and faithful all the time. And we're going to love and obey Him. You want to leave a lasting legacy? You leave that. You leave that, not only for your children and your grandchildren and your posterity, but you leave that for others that are witnessing your life. These little children in here, you know something? They see more than adults see. They know, they know and they see, they recognize, they identify you're being watched by more, and I'm being watched by more people than I think I'm being watched by. And I have a responsibility to be on guard all the time, to be vigilant. Let me give you one last thing. Look back, if you would, to chapter 34, Deuteronomy. You'll leave a lasting testimony. Die with confidence and hope. Die with confidence and hope. The Bible said about Moses in verse 7, chapter 34, he was 120 years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. Interesting that God leaves us that, didn't he? Look back in chapter 32. Chapter 32. Right in the midst of what is known as Moses' song, as he begins there, he says in verse 3, he said, I will publish the name of the Lord. Hey, he knows he's going to die. Well, what are you going to do, Moses? I will publish the name of the Lord. Ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is there. There's a little chorus that goes with that, modeled after that verse. It's the words to that verse. His way is perfect. He'll always do that which is right. Hey, what did, what did Moses do? He died with confidence and he died with hope. He said, I know, I understand. Someone wrote these words. I once scorned every fearful thought of death when it was but the end of pulse and breath. But now my eyes have seen that past the pain there is a world waiting to be claimed. Earth maker holy, let me now depart, for living is such a temporary art, but dying is but getting dressed for God. Our graves are merely doorways cut in the sod. Remember this thought. A wise person always lives with the end in view. 
Moses came to that realization. He lived with the end in view. He lived, I believe, to leave a lasting testimony to those that were coming behind him. How to deal, how to demonstrate how to handle failure, how to invest in the lives of others, how to live even knowing what was coming, loving and obeying God, and then dying with confidence and hope. You know, if we take those four things to heart, I think we can make a lasting legacy and an impact on our children, our grandchildren, these children, those we have influence over in other places. God help us do it. Hey, if there's ever a day, if there's ever a day that we ought to live the truth, it's the day. I want to finish right. I had the privilege, and I, I'm telling this, and you already know it probably, I have the privilege of growing up in a home where my mother and father were both believers when I was born. Uh, my sister had come to know Christ as a, as a child. I had that privilege to come to know Christ as a young boy, uh, to grow up in a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church. I had that privilege. Now, everybody has that privilege. Not everybody has that opportunity. I understand that. And some would probably look at my life and say, well, you got a good start. you got a good start. But you know something? I'm grateful that i got a good start. I'm, I, I like David. Thank God for a goodly heritage. But I want to I finish like Peter said. I want to have a grand entrance. Because there's a lot of people who got started right who didn't finish right. They didn't finish right. But I want to finish right. Moses, oh, he had his ups and downs, but I believe he came to the end of his life and said, I want to finish right. And may that be our desire, to finish right, to leave a lasting legacy. Let's bow in prayer together. And dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight, and these are just simple thoughts. But... If we think about them, even in their simplicity, they become very profound to us. Uh, Help us to learn from the testimony of Moses how to handle failure. Lord, we've seen how not to handle failure in the lives of some people. We think about the life of King Saul, and he just couldn't handle failure. His life ended in tragedy, disgrace. But Lord, we have opportunity, even when we fail, we know that you are a forgiving God. If we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us, you say, from all unrighteousness. Lord, I pray that we would do that very thing. We wouldn't hang on to things, that we would seek your faith. Help us to invest in the lives of others. Just like Paul told Timothy, the things thou hast learned of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who should be able to teach others also. Lord, help us to extend it beyond our families, to extend it to those we have influence over, to children like so many of our people are doing this week. Guide us and help us. Lord Jesus, help us to live day in and day out a life of loving and obeying you. May it be seen, may it be revealed. May we not just speak of it, but may we live it day in and day out. And then when it comes to that time to die, help us to die with hope and confidence and knowing that this may be the day that we enter into your presence through the door of death. And so help us to remain true and faithful and obedient, we pray. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed, and I'm not going to ask you to leave your place and come forward or anything. A different setting tonight. I understand that. But maybe, maybe God has spoken to your heart. And I'm just going to ask Wendy, if she would, just to play something softly there. And you don't have to leave. But maybe just for a moment you want to make your seat and altar there. And As she plays, if God has spoken to your heart, just, just take a moment. We'll go close in prayer in a minute. But maybe he's laid some things on your heart this evening how to leave a lasting testimony, how to leave a lasting spiritual legacy.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight, and we thank you for the opportunity we've had to gather here. Lord, I thank you for your people who've come out on this special evening, a change of schedule a little bit, and a little different type of a setting, and I thank you that your people are here and are faithful in the meeting tonight. Lord, help us to take these truths and to live out these truths in our lives. Lord, I pray that we'd finish right, that we'd have that desire in our hearts and be obedient to you. I do pray, uh, Lord, that you would bless as the word of God goes forth even now in the hearts and lives of children. Speak to hearts, we pray. Speak to families as well. And, uh, Lord, I pray these children would encourage others to be with them throughout the week. That we have a great number here, a great host, not just to say we had a lot of children here, but that we had a lot of opportunity to get the gospel into people's hearts and minds. Lord, I pray that you would have your perfect will and way Give us safety as we journey to our homes. Bring us back again at the time appointed, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.